Christmas! Thank you for worshiping online with us today. Uh, all of the parts of the service will be coming from our own homes uh, to your home today, and we just thank you for joining us. Let's begin our worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, Patty Jo Weiss with the reading for the day. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which, is gli which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you delivered will soon deliver you mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man mary did you know your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Good morning and Merry Christmas. Uh, thank you for taking time to be able to join us for this special Christmas Day uh, service. 
Most of you uh, probably attended one of our five Christmas Eve services yesterday, uh, either in person or online, and probably find yourself today uh, in your home or maybe in the home of a family member uh, waiting to open gifts. Maybe you have a special meal. Uh, maybe you're celebrating in a variety of other ways, uh, just as you should. However, at the, at the same time, be careful today and this week to not be distracted. I have a friend who works at a hospital and she told me one time that I wouldn't be able to believe the number of car accident victims that she sees that come in because they were trying not to be able to spill their coffee and so they got in an accident. Uh, I must admit, I'm quite taken back by all the unique driving behaviors I see while coming into work Monday through Thursday or even on Sunday morning. Uh, people who are talking on their phone or texting, people who are eating their Egg McMuffin, people who are shaving or they're doing their makeup, people who are letting their dog ride on their lap or even trying to read a magazine, all these different things. And what do all of them have in common? Well, they all contribute to the number one cause of car accidents in America, distracted driving. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, none of these behaviors on their own are evil, but when they take more of a priority than the all-important responsibility of driving a vehicle, accidents can happen, injuries can occur, and lives can be lost. What does this have to do with, with Christmas? Well, for many people in our world today, Christmas can feel at times like a bad accident. Maybe you planned the perfect meal, but you burnt the main course and sat, so now your Christmas dinner is just completely ruined. Uh, maybe you were trying to get that perfect family photo, but one of the grandkids stayed over their girlfriend's house too long and now it's incomplete because somebody's missing. Maybe you dropped so many hints to your spouse for the one small thing you wanted for Christmas and after opening all of the gifts, it was like they weren't even listening. Now again, None of these things are bad on their own. A Christmas dinner, a family photo, a thoughtful gift. But when they become a distraction to the all-important celebration of Christmas, accidents can occur. People can be hurt. Uh, and yes, even eternal life can be lost if we miss that all-important message. Today in our text, John points us to the true focus of Christmas. Uh, he starts with that very first verse from John chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 1. He writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John's portrayal of the Christmas story begins not on Christmas Day per se, but in the very beginning. In fact, before time itself. John pushes aside the, the things of this world, the things that, again, are not bad on their own, but often serve as distractions so that we may focus on the, on the true power and majesty of Christmas. Jesus is not simply a point on the, the timeline of creation. He is the creator. He who existed before the beginning of time itself. It is through this gift that we truly discover joy. It is not a term that uh, we should just throw around in excess during the Christmas season, but something we should really be looking for. And in fact, everybody seems to be searching for this joy. We attempt to create its ambience by decorating, by developing fun holiday experiences, or again, by having that perfect gift wrapped underneath the tree. And still, while all along, this gift of joy has been with us from the beginning. It costs us nothing. It's not created by man. It's a gift that was promised in the word and delivered in the flesh. A promise that was made and a promise that was kept. Our text goes on to say in verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light 
so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. So this week, my family and I went through a drive through Christmas light display down at uh, Salt River Fields. Uh, we were with another family and all the kids were overly excited to see all of the lights and their brilliance. And as you pull in with the other cars, uh, there are all these attendants out in front guiding people into these organized lines. Each of the attendants had this uh, light up necklace on, some had light up bracelets, and all of them had these light up wands that were directing you, almost like an air traffic controller, to the display. Now it was fairly obvious that all of the lights these men and women were wearing were not the ultimate display of lights we had come to see. They were simply there to be able to get our attention, to be able to point us in the right direction, and to be able to show us the magnificent lights that we had come to see. You know, this too, we are told, is the job of John the Baptist, that he himself is not the light, it's not what the people have come to be able to see, but he has the privilege of pointing people to the light. You know, you too have been given this all-important role within our world. And there are a ton of people around you today distracted by so many different things, desperately seeking joy, wanting to, to step out of the darkness into the light. And so why don't you and I point them there? You don't have to fix the problems of people around you or even produce solutions to solve unrest within our world. Not that we shouldn't try and put forth efforts but what we really need to do is to point them to the one who can do all of these things. John goes on to say in verse 9, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. Yet he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The message of Christmas is a message for everyone, John says. Jesus comes to this world for the angry, for the downtrodden, for the hurt, for the mourning, for the wounded, for the depressed. He comes for sinners. Our God cannot bear to see us left in these states of darkness. So he sends light into our world, giving you and I the right to become children of God. And so today and this week, as you gather together underneath your Christmas tree, like my family and I will, like Pastor Mark's family and him will, like all of our people will, don't be caught up in the distractions of this world but focus on and also point to the one who gives joy, who gives light, the one who is the savior of the world. And in Jesus' name, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Amen. Amen uh, to Pastor Jeremy's message there. Appreciate him sharing that great word with us uh, this Christmas day. I do pray we always pay attention to the light and we share that light with the world. One of the ways we share that is the gifts that we bring to our newborn King, Jesus, and time and talents and treasures. Uh, if you'd like to give an offering to Desert Foothills, you can do that online right here at this website. And uh, also, if you would, uh, leave a comment or uh, reply back to the email, however you found this video, uh, comment on YouTube or reply back to the email that we sent this link out with. Uh, just let us know you worship with us today and what you thought about it. And certainly if you have any prayer requests, uh, we would like to know that as well. Right now we'll go into a time of prayer together. Let's pray. Lord God, you reign over all the earth. We lift up our voices and sing for joy to you in celebration of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve this delight among your people throughout the year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, the great mystery of the Incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds. 
Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of your Savior's birth, of his life, his death, and his resurrection, that your spirit may work the miracle of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide all who administer and judge our laws in this land. Preserve us in justice and truth, and make us faithful citizens, honoring those in authority over us. Wherever rulers spurn your calling to serve justly, are hostile to your truth, or persecute your people, turn them from their evil and protect your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant healing, we pray, peace, patience, and faith that endures to all who suffer sickness in mind or body, to all the homebound, and to any who ask our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your Son, you have called people from all times and places into the body of Christ, his church. We thank you for all the believers who have gone before us, especially who have been with us during Christmas's past and now live with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, the Word become flesh, the Savior of the nations, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. Thank you again uh, for worshiping with us today. Again, from my home to yours, a very merry and blessed Christmas. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Christmas peace. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And to heaven and heaven and nature. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Just